Hello everybody, this is week 21. Uh, today we are going to start with a new theme. Uh, the title of our theme is Famous Scientists. In this theme we are going to discuss or talk about famous scientists and famous people who did uh, changes to our lives, to our world. So uh, let's get started. First of all, this video talks about uh, the, uh, scientists, uh, the, the scientists the that we are going to read the text about. I'm not going to play the video here, you can play it uh, when Stephen you watch William Hawking this was born in Oxford, video. England on the 300th anniversary of the death of Galileo on January 8, 1942. At 17 years old, he entered Oxford University. Stephen Hawking has admitted in many cases that he was not the most ambitious student. One day he calculated that he spent about maybe an hour a day on schoolwork. In 1962, Hawking moved to Cambridge University for a PhD in cosmology, and one year later was diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. ALS is a progressive motor neuron disease, so over time, the victim loses functionality of muscles. And over the past decades, Stephen Hawking has gradually lost the use of most of his muscles, but his mind remains quite keen. I think that once he was hit with this earth-shattering diagnosis, he actually sought a refuge in doing physics. And if anything, it helped him become one of the world's great scientists. Although his diagnosis only gave him two and a half years to live, Hawking married in 1965 and stunned the science world in 1974 with his PhD on black holes. Stephen taught us how to define a black hole. He then made a brilliant discovery that uh, black holes uh, can radiate, Hawking radiation. That then showed the whole world the connection between black hole physics and thermodynamics. And that connection has been a central theme in theoretical physics ever since. He became the Sherman Fairchild Distinguished Scholar at Caltech in 1974. And five years later, Hawking was named Cambridge University's Lucasian Professor of Mathematics, an honor bestowed on only 14 people since 1663. Stephen Hawking is a theoretical physicist of a very specific kind. He studies cosmology, particle physics, gravity. That's trying to understand the very basic laws of physics as well as where the universe itself came from. Hawking sees things that other people didn't see. Time and again, he just thinks more deeply than most of the rest of us. And those insights have had big consequences. Even though Hawking deteriorated to the point that he needed a computerized speech synthesizer to speak, he wrote A Brief History of Time in 1988, selling more than 10 million copies. Stephen Hawking's book, A Brief History of Time, which was a bestseller for weeks and weeks, was about some of the most profound questions that face humanity. It's really about where we come from and where we're headed, from a physicist's point of view. After expanding upon his work with several more books, Hawking increased his popularity by guest starring in TV shows like The Simpsons, Star Trek The Next Generation, and The Big Bang Theory. I think Hawking is absolutely the most popular physicist, probably since Einstein. There are plenty of other physicists who are working very deeply at nature's secrets, but Hawking has celebrity status that very few scientists reach. Hawking received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2009. Although he retired from teaching that same year, Stephen Hawking continues to be hailed as one of the greatest scientific minds of all time. Stephen Hawking is a scientist has had a tremendous impact on our understanding of the universe and the laws of nature. At the same time, as a human being, he has been an inspiration to the world, to his colleagues, and to people with disabilities everywhere. First of all, let's start with the genre uh, of our text today. Today we are going to start with a new genre. Uh, the new genre today is a biography. First of all, you're all asking, what is a biography? I will tell you, a biography is a text written to inform a reader about real person's life. So a biography gives information about someone's life. 
The author is someone other than the person featured in the text. So when you are writing a biography, it means you are writing about someone else's life, not about your own life. The author uses narration to tell the story of the person's life. So, of course, in biography, there is narration because you are telling us a story about someone's life. There are some features and elements of a biography, such as the theme or message. Maybe the theme or the message that um, this person, the famous person we are talking about, um, gives or sends to people. The problem and the challenges this person faced, the contents, the headings and subheadings, facts, because of course, of course, we are using real information, chronological order, which is very important because of course, we are using dates uh, and we are using time, family and childhood, because of course, when we are writing about someone's life, we are going to talk about his childhood and his family, big moments and events. These are the turning points in someone's life, timeline, pictures and captions. So these are the features and elements of a biography. Uh, our skill for now is chronological order. The chronological order means when I write the events in order from the beginning to the middle to the end. Usually we use many transitions such as first, second, then, furthermore, and so on. But in biographies mainly we use years and dates. So usually in biographies, we use dates. In 1931, in 1879, we usually use dates in biographies. Let's look at this example. Read the below uh, paragraph to fill in the flow chart. This paragraph talks about soccer. So soccer is a game that has been made played sorry for numerous years in fact many people believe that it began in england over 800 years ago about 200 years ago in the early 1800s people in boys in england called it football however each school made up their own rules in 1863 a group of players met and wrote official rules for soccer in nine, uh, soccer started spreading to other countries in 1904 an international group called fifa formed to make sure that every team around the world followed the same soccer rules today soccer is one of the most popular sports in the world as you can see there is more than one date so we are going to take these information in this paragraph and fill them in a flow chart this is what do we call a flow chart. So usually you are going to have this chart in your exams. So you have to fill what happened in 1800. So you go back to the text. Soccer began in England. What happened in 1863? The rules for soccer were written. In 1904, an international group called FIFA formed to make sure that every team around the world followed the same soccer rules. In 2020, soccer is one of the most popular sports around the world. So as you can see, we filled this chart with the information from the text, copy, paste. This is very easy. OK, so this is what do we call a flow chart? And this is what do we mean by chronological order? Now let's talk about the vocabulary words that we are going to have in uh, our lesson. The first vocabulary word is saddened. Let's read the sentence. We were saddened to see how ill she looks. So if you see someone ill, okay, let's say that you have seen someone ill or sick. Would you feel happy when you see someone ill or sick? Of course not. You would feel sad. So we were saddened. It means we felt sad. We became sad when we saw how ill or how sick she looks. Number two, extraordinary, extremely good or impressive. The race is an extraordinary uh, event. Um, this party was extraordinary. So something which is extremely good, very good, very impressive. Legacy. When Mary's father died, he left her a full legacy, but she decided to donate it to the charity and start from scratch. So when someone dies, they leave 
uh, money uh, and let's say money and some uh, possessions for their families. This is called a legacy. So a legacy is something received from someone who is di who, who died or who is dead. In Arabic, I'm gonna use an Arabic word. I'm sorry, but I have to use it just to make it, to make it easier for you. It means al wirte, okay? Al mirath, yani. Number four, intuition. No one told me what might happen, but I had an intuition that something awful was about to happen. I had an intuition. I had a feeling. I had a certain knowledge. So my brother was out and I had an intuition that uh, he is going to do um, an accident. So I had a certain feeling, a certain sight, a certain knowledge. Okay. Number five, frustration. He shook his head with frustration. He shook his head with anger. He shook his head with sadness. This is what you mean by frustration. Diagnosis. She is an expert in the diagnosis and treatment of eye diseases. Okay. Let's say that uh, you have a pain in your stomach. So you go visit a doctor in order to diagnose the illness why are you having this pain so the diagnosis means the act of identifying a disease the act of telling you what disease do you have ignited the fire was ignited by sparks the fire was started by sparks this fire was given life by sparks so this is this is what do you mean by ignited to give life or energy to something Stardom, the main actor of this film, thanked all those, those who had helped him on the road to stardom. Stardom comes from the word star, okay? So stardom, the state of being a star, the state of being famous, the state of being well-known. Astounded, the doctors were astounded when the very sick patient survived. They were astounded, they were shocked, they were surprised, okay? So when you feel astounded, it means you feel surprised. Let's start with our reading lesson. Our lesson is about a person who uh, fought, who was very determined, who was very strong and brave. Let me ask you the essential question. How do some person's insights shape outstanding scientists and inspire global audiences in the millions? How a disabled person, how can, um, let's say, a, a sick person, a person who suffers, uh, become an, an outst outstanding scientist, which uh, inspires the whole world? Let's see the story of our uh, of this big scientist, of this inspiring person. Read about how Stephen Hawking's willpower has made him the brightest star in the firement of science. Our story is about Stephen Hawking, science's brightest star, dies aged 76. So, briefly, our story is about a scientist. His name is Stephen Hawking. This person was um, a physicist and uh, he died at the age of 76. Okay, this person had a disability, but no matter what his disability was, he was an extraordinary man whose work and legacy will live for many years. He is persistent, he is courageous, he is brilliant, and he is a humorous person. Okay? Now, let's uh, briefly talk about this person. So as we said, this person was diagnosed with motor neuron disease in 1963 so he cannot uh, move his body uh, he cannot even stand up he cannot he doesn't have let's say neurons he doesn't have the ability to um to uh, walk or to do any uh, normal activity 
his doctors expected that he would live only for two years so he was diagnosed with this disease at the age of 21 and his doctors expected that he might live for one or two years so he might die at the age of 23 but for the great surprise he died at the age of 76 he survived for more than half a century this person um didn't uh give up he was very strong uh, even though he was also diagnosed with um with leukemia and uh he was very strong he did the impossible in order to achieve his goals and his achievements are till now effective and uh, they are still inspiring the whole world this person is married he has three children um, he made an amazing family uh, despite uh, from his disability but he was able to uh, make a great family uh, he his children love him they are very proud of him also now we are going to start with the practice exercises related to the story First of all, the sentences below misinterpret some information in the above text. We have to rewrite them correctly. Lord Rees, the astronomer, admired Hawking, who worked for over than 50 years. Lord Rees, the astronomer, admired Hawking, who worked for more than 50 years. In paragraph 4, it's mentioned 50 years, not over. He praised Hawking half century of work. Jane Wilder was the only woman Hawking got married to. Hawking got married to more than one woman, as mentioned in paragraph 11, from his first marriage. Okay, so because they said from his first marriage, so it means that he was married or he got married more than one time. Let's use contextual clues to figure out the meanings of the words in the box below. Unbounded, terminal, absolute, artificial, and distant. Organic products contain no preservatives or coloring. These are organic, so they do not contain any artificial, of course, preservatives or coloring. So artificial means something which is made by human. It's not organic. I have confidence in my dear Parents, I have absolute confidence in my dear parents. He is very strong and his energy is unbounded. There is no bound for his energy. The car has reached its speed and can run faster no longer. So it's reached its terminal speed, its maximum speed. 